Hello there, good afternoon everybody. How are you today? Um, enjoying the rain? No, the garden is. Um, I, did, did you notice my Debbie will be with you soon? I thought it would have rain in the background, makes a change from all the... The heat wave we've had for the last few weeks, not complaining about any of it really. Okay, here we go. Uh, Lisa, hello morning. Afternoon, I should say. Shirley, Karina, hello, and Kristen, and Cheryl, and Sally, and Cheryl again, and Sally Ann. Oh, I said that. Um, Sally Ann's in the French Alps. Oh. Um, hello to Brenda and Tina, and Sue and Margaret. Sorry if I miss anybody. We've got so many messages coming through. Um, hi, Claire. Hi, Pat on Facebook. Who else have we got there? Who's first in? Um, Sue Dawson. Hello. June Baker. And Lisa, and Linda, and Sandra, and Jackie, and... Lisa and Heather and gosh there's so many of you here today already um, it's nice isn't it really appreciate this thank you right we are going to be talking about oh Heather's in Italy lovely people she says um, we're going to be talking stretch fabric and um, stitches for stretch fabric in a bit and I'm going to make a headband because it's really quick and really easy I know we don't normally make anything on a Wednesday but I thought why not hello Diane in Aberdeen and uh, Pierre Dad is that. Hola. Christine's in Biggleswade. Hello. A nice and dry in Renfrew. It's nice and wet here. Hopefully the, the lawn will turn from that lovely shade of, of corn to back to green grass again. Um, Kirsty's loving the rain, though I'm sure bobbing isn't. No, we have to time it really carefully because even if it's a little bit drizzly, she won't go out. So as soon as it stops, I have to push her into the garden, chase her around a bit, then she has a win, that's it for a couple of days. Rainy in Burnley, morning Sally. Hello Bonnie in South Africa, garden birds fabric. No Teresa, um, I, I didn't supply that to Crate and Craft, that was directly from the Craft Cotton Company. Apparently they found some bolts of fabric but they gave it all to Craft Cotton, um, sorry to Create and Craft, so it didn't, it didn't come through me at all. Um, I think we've got some of the green birds, but that's about it. That's all we've got in stock. I will ask if there's any left after Great and Craft, but uh, they're a bit busy doing orders at the moment. It's been a busy weekend there. Hello, Anne, Linda. Um, oh, Lisa's not 100% back to normal, but much improved. Oh, good. Glad you're getting better, mate. Hello, Tracy, Letitia. Hello to you too. Um, hi, Joan. Afternoon, Debbie and Judy, and another Debbie and Elaine and Amanda. Amanda van der West, uh, Westerhausen. Uh, van der Westerhausen. That's a very glamorous name. Uh, hi, Sheila. No kitchen or sky. So glad to see. No kitchen or sky. <laughs> that's, it. that's the two things that your life revolves around these days. Oh, Lisa. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, that'd be something to look forward to. Thanks, mate. Um, Susan, Alison. Hello to you too. The ginger, I have asked Jean, oh, well done for getting the gingerbread man, men, oh gingerbread biscuits um, apron, um, because I just can't get any more. I keep, I keep flirting and, and, and batting my eyelashes and being very nice and making teas and I still haven't got any. So I just don't think there's any left. Hi Laura, felt's on its way. Um, hello Racina and Amanda, oh gosh there's so many of you here. Oh, Chris. I'll send her our love, won't you, when you see her again. We're all thinking about her. Hello, Deborah in Texas. Patricia. Uh, gingerbread April. Yeah, uh, Debbie, I'm, I, I don't know if I can. I've, I've begged. I haven't exactly thrown myself on the floor, you know. That, not that, well, I've asked a lot and I just don't think there is any. Um, watching the patchwork is meant by girly candy is free pep instead of quilt is grid. Mm, Teresa, no, the quilt is grid is permanent you iron it on and it stays on and it becomes part of the fabric like interfacing freezer paper you, you peel away I've never tried it with freezer paper but freezer paper i think you, you iron it on and then you peel it away afterwards so i don't think that's going to work um hello winter sky is that your real name that's a very glamorous name i'm free spirit in north carolina um hi nancy barbara wanda oh i'm way behind on the facebook messages sorry but so many of you um would you like to share the gingerbread recipe anyway? I could do that, Linda. As I, I, I say it's an old family recipe. It's, it's actually my son's recipe. Um, but yes, I don't, I don't mind sharing that with you. Uh, black felt for Santa's boots. 
Oh, yes. Um, I'll put some on order. The thing with ordering when you order wholesalers, and I'm sure you're aware, there's a minimum order. So I can't just order, you know, 50 black felt. It's got to be 50 of this and 50 of that and 50 of the other. So I need to put a big order together for it. Um, if you're really struggling that much, you can applique your own really easily. Um, hi, Rebecca in Miami. Having withdrawals, machine in the mend. Oh, Susan, you need a spare. Anyway, no, no, you've missed so much, have you? Uh, not today. I haven't even started yet. I want to show you a few bits and bobs, not very much. So not like the other day, was it on uh, Saturday? Uh, 35 minutes of showing you new fabrics. Um, we've still got a lot of it left. We had a, a very busy weekend. Um, any more gingerbread aprons? And I keep asking. At the moment, no, I can't get any, but I do keep asking. I think they, they, they normally keep a few back um, because they supply so many shops up and down the country, just in case. Like We do, to be honest. We've always got a little bit, well, maybe a metre or so. We don't put everything that we've got on the website, just in case something gets lost in the post or something happens. Or sometimes you're just chopping away at the bolt and, and it, it's split, so you end up with... Um, no, we cut things into half metres or metres, and then all of a sudden I've got this skinny bit of fabric, which means that the whole bolt's going to be short when we get to the end of it. Um, that happens a lot, actually, in Israel. It's really annoying. At any company we deal with, that's even Lewis and Irene, that's happened with before. And it's just, well, that's all about. Or sometimes you order bolts of 12 metres and they come in at 12.2. At, at can't do anything with that 2.2 so that's why you know it's, I hate doing it but sometimes we do get to the end of the bolt somebody's placed an order for a meter and we've only got three quarters left because that happens or sometimes they're damaged um th that doesn't happen often but occasionally there'll be a mark or a little hole or something in the fabric um, quite hot in Plymouth oh party on Sunday oh Jean it was wonderful and it was so hot we had bouncy castle it was a pirate bouncy castle for Vienna and um, bag on my top left. Oh, that's that's the bag that is made with Kimberly's um, palm house panel. That was the pattern was with creation. We've got the panel, but the pattern was for creation craft. Anyway, we had at the Bouncy Castle. The zip wire went down a storm. Um, Gary put lots of things like. Um, polystyrene rocket things so you put them on a, a pad and you jump on it and they go shooting like 100 miles up into the air then they have to catch them and they, it was brilliant we had a really nice time so we had my sister over and my niece and she's got two children and um, all my uh, all my three kids were here with all of their partners and the neighbors little girls came around to play it was lovely we just had a whole day of playing and bouncing and swinging and it's lovely um the oh yes, and said that one. Oh, they're all chatting to Lisa on Facebook. I'll leave you to it for a second. Hi, Lynn. Lovely and sunny at New in North Yorkshire. Um, hello, Jane. Oh, thank you very much, Lynn. It's quite an old one, this one. I'm waiting for my order to arrive today. Oh, lovely, Sharon. I hope it gets there. Anyway, have a look at these. This is a back in stock. Um, it's the Debbie Shaw Birds and Bobbins Fabric Bundle. Um, so there's three half meters and one half meter free. We did bring this to you before, but we sold out. So if you just put bundle into the search engine on uh, debbieshawsewing.com, it'll come up with this. These are organic fabrics. They're designed by me based on my collection of vintage sewing machines. And I've even got bobbins with DS on them. They've got my name on the bobbins. And then I've got some, um, these aren't vintage, I know, with the stalks, they're, they're rather classic. But these are some of the vintage scissors that I collect as well. And then you've got a metre, uh, sorry, half a metre free. That's actually 150 wide of, um, of Delft blue fabric as well. So you pay for the three, you get one absolutely free. When these have gone, I can't get any, any more of this fabric either. The thing with the fabrics is they, um, you design them, they print them. They print a certain amount and that's it. It doesn't come back. So once, they, once they've sold through, it's very rarely that you'll actually get a fabric coming back again. You may find some of the bigger brands repeat in a different colour option, um, but not with these. Once they have gone, they are no longer available and that is the end of that. So that's the last of those bundles that we've got on the website now. We're coming to the end of the Lewis and Irene 3 for 2. So this is the Hannah's Garden collection. These are beautiful fabrics. I love all of them. I've made so many projects from, from bags and smaller things like the pink that we made for the, um, oh, 
sew along one Saturday. Made loads of stuff out of this. Um, it's a Licky Dip. So you will get three. But we can't guarantee which three you're going to get. It could be that, 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 or that, and that, and that, and that, and that, and that. Um, there's more than this. There is a collection of 15. But you pay for two, you get one free. If you order two sets, then we'll make them all different. And we can do that. There's 15 fabrics. So if you order two, three, four, or five sets all in one go, then we'll try and make sure that every one of those is different for you. But that's, I'm showing you that again, I know we showed you that the other day because we don't have very many left, so that's coming to an end, and that's going to be it with that one as well. Anne Marie's making an English paper piece hexagon pincushion before I go to FOQ. Oh, Festival Quilt. Oh, yes, not going there this year. Um, bit busy. Uh, it's this weekend, isn't it? I'm actually presenting on Create and Craft like a proper normal presenter. I'm there on Saturday from 4 till 8, doing four shows back to back, and it'll be all paper craft. I know nothing about paper Because it's their summer holiday, and they haven't got any presenters, so I'm stepping in to do them a favour. So that's going to be interesting, because it's been a long time since I've done anything like that. And I know not what I am talking about as far as paper craft is concerned, so that might be a bit of a car crash. If you want to join in, uh, that's Saturday night from 4 till 8 on Create and Craft. Then on Sunday morning, because I'm standing in again, I think I'm covering hangover, hangover cover. Um, I've got four hours, can't remember what time. But that's all sewing, so that's not so bad, is it? At least to know what I'm talking about when sewing concern. So yes, if you want to laugh on Saturday night, <laughs> Lisa says, I remember your attempt at embossing on silver. I am rubbish at card making. It looks really easy and when you're quite artistic and you know I can draw and I paint and I've got I've got an O level in pottery and I, I like to think I'm quite creative and you look at somebody making a card and you think oh I can do that. My card looks like a three-year-old's made it. I stick things down and it doesn't look quite. I am absolutely rubbish at making cards. So yes yeah, so it, it probably was hilarious. I did <laughs> I did warn Crate and Craft that they probably won't make any sales on Saturday now. They won't care they're at a party. Um, Laura took a blindfold off this week and had a shopping spree. The search press offer is amazing. Oh, yes, Laura. Where is that promoted? Because I, I think it's on the... Oh, they must have put it on Half Yard Club Facebook page. I know it's on their Instagram page. Yes, they've got a really good deal on books, haven't they? I can't remember what it is. Have a look. Have a look on search press. Mary's looking forward to her pink passage, pa pink passage, <laughs> pink package, package. We have back in stock the snow, the, sorry, Santa sacks. These will make one huge sack. They're really big, but I'm kind of thinking you could use a plain fabric on the back and make two sacks out of it. And um, the striped fabric around the top is to make a ribbon to tie around it. But they're, they're really big. You could quilt it. You don't have to make a Santa sack. These would make quite nice little quilts. Or just wall hangings, decorations for Christmas, table centres maybe. Um, but those are back in stock again. Um, that's probably going to be the last time we get those. And we do the advent calendars we've got. We've got quite a few advent calendars again. And the bunting panel is back in stock as well. I love this one. I think this is such a good idea. I may copy it. Copy it. I may take inspiration from it. It's huge, look. And the nice thing about this, there's no wastage. And it says, Merry Christmas. A wastage as in if you're cutting out directional fabric and you're cutting it into triangles like this, you're going to get one that's either upside down or you're wasting it. But you don't with these. They've even got a little bit of seam allowance at the top. So what you need to do is to... Uh, let's have a look what it says, actually, because it's got instructions on there. Um, I would personally put some backing fabric on it and then bias binding across the top. So, fusible web method, a bunting panel, fusible web, um, so if, you bun if you're using fusible web, press the fabric to remove any creases, mm -hmm. apply fusible web to the wrong side of the panel when it's set, oh, so you glue it to another piece of fabric. Okay, um, 
that's if you don't want to sew it. Oh, I see. Oh, that makes sense. So you just use something like Bondawood to stick it to another piece of fabric and then trim the sides of the, flag, the flags using pinking shears. That's a nice idea and you don't have to sew anything. Why didn't I think of that? It's because I sew, probably. Or you, they've got the sewing method um, and that's got lining to it and ribbon or bias, oh, bias binding across the top. So that's quite easy. never thought about that. Because it's not going to fray or anything, is it? And, and a bonder web's quite a, a permanent bond. That's a good idea. That'd be really quick as well, wouldn't it? Peggy Sue loves the panel. They're really versatile as well. And nice quality, which means that they're going to last a long time too. Um, recovering from having a very severe mould. Ooh, Jam's had a tooth out this morning. It's, oh, look, oh, it's over now. Oh, okay. I should really make pay more attention to what my employers are doing, shouldn't I? Oh, now let me show you this felt. Now, this is a synthetic felt, but it's really soft. Now, a synthetic felt tends to be stronger than uh, a viscose or a wool felt. So if you're making something that's like a, a toy, I bought this in thinking of birthday bear because the birthday bear is going to take two pieces of this plus nose and ears and all that kind of thing. That's the colour that I use for birthday bear. Haven't got him here, but birthday bear, if you're not aware, is a... I'm just looking around because he's in here somewhere. He is a, a bear that I made for the Half Yard Club, so it's a member project. Now they do come in pieces of five, so you're going to be able to make two birthday bears if that's what you're going to make. But if you just wanted to stock up on felt that you can use for replique or for toy making, if you're a Corinne Lapierre fan, I know she's got a new book out of Christmas decorations. Um, this is a perfect felt to make those with. Sometimes with synthetic felt, it sticks to your fingerprints. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, it just doesn't feel very nice to work with. But this, I had to question whether it was actually synthetic or a wool mix, but it, it is synthetic. And it's washable as well. I'd wash it at 30 degrees, but it's washable too. So if you are using it on, you know, for applique pieces or around a little girl's dress or something like that, or on an apron, then you can pop it in the washing machine. They measure 33 centimetres by 27. Not sure what that is in inches. And um, you're getting five pieces of those in total. So that's the sand. And a lot of you have gone for all of them already. That one's taupe. So it's a nice, soft, warm, grey kind of colour. That would make a nice birthday bear. The peach, faces, noses, skin tones, if you want a paler skin tone like that. Um, I'm, I've started working on my gnome book, and this is going to be noses and feet for the first one that I've already made. So again, you've got five pieces of that. That's the peach. Then there's a lavender. And I'd love to see birthday bear in some of these bright colours. Again, it's so soft. It's really easy to work with. And it doesn't pull apart. It's, it's a really strong felt. It took us a while to find this. And then there's the teal. And... Laurie, yes it is. It is the same as the gnome felt. It came from the same company. And that one is... I think we're calling that one raspberry. So it's not bright red. We do have bright red from the same company. It's the same quality by the half meter. Um, this is the only color that we've got in the squares at the moment. It's really lovely quality. So that's, we've only got those colors at the moment. If you like them, there's, there's hundreds of colors to choose from. I just chose my favorites, to be honest. Because I can. It's my shop. Um, 13 inch by 10 and 3 quarters. Thank you, Rosina. 13 inches by 10 and 3 quarters they measure. So a lot of the time when you buy felt squares, the 9 inches square or 12 inches square, these are bigger. I wanted to go for the bigger pre-cut squares. Because I can. This is my shop. One more thing to show you. If you are a member of the Half Yard Club, here you go. That's your secondary project this month. 
Um, it's a obviously, a, is it a poof or a poof hay? I know we've had this question before, or is it a stool? Now, this one we've been using this over the weekend actually. I laminated the base, so you might can see that that's uh, a little bit shiny. Don't have to do that if you're using it indoors, but this is going to go on the grass, so I use some of the odor coat just on the base bit. That's all in the instructions if you wanted to do that, but you don't need to and it zips at the side it's full of beans we don't sell beans um, but these are recycled beans that i got off amazon do make sure that they come in a bag that they come like in a net bag and you can literally pour the bag into the um into the poof because if they're not in a bag you're going to be picking them up like you do with the christmas tree needles for years to come and this has actually got a round cushion in the top of it as well because it makes it a bit softer than sitting on the beans. You don't need to put the cushion in there, that's explained in the instructions, but I think it, it helps it to keep its form instead of going all squishy, um, but it's, it's a, bit, a bit more comfy as well. So we've been using that over the weekend. So you can make that in any fabric that you like, but we do have the tie-dye in stock at the moment in two colour options. I think they're mustard and rust, I can't remember. I think that's what we called them. There you go, that's there. Um, it's polyester, but it's a linen look. So polyester means it's really, really strong and washable and um, colour fast. It looks and feels like a linen, but it's not going to crease. Um, it's more canvassy, I think you'd call it. So it's a really tough fabric. That's going to be great for... Amanda's making that poofy... That poofy thing, we should call it that poofy thing. This is make a nice bag, um, I'm thinking, if you kind of fussy cut the tie-dye or centralise the tie-dye in the front of the pattern. Um, but it's, it's a really nice quality, that one. 37th wedding anniversary for Valerie. Happy wedding anniversary to you, Valerie. What are you doing? Uh, Claire likes the mustard one. It's 150 wide. It's a great fabric for curtains and um, larger items like that, chair covers and home furnishings and those kind. Oh, I want to show you that one as well because we have a rust coloured plain um, lightweight canvas this one um, but it's it's just the same colour it matches really well so if you wanted to make it with a plain top and bottom or add a border around it or if you're making curtains and you want to put a plain top on them you know the curtains that we did for half yard club in this with ties and the top and that would look really nice there you go Amanda made an ugly cat bed from an old blanket. Was that an ugly bed or an ugly cat? Um, Steph has got a rather wrong, long wish list, she says. Right, shall we talk stretch fabric? Let me just bring this in. <coughs> Excuse me. So jersey. Jersey is a knitted fabric. So very much like if you knitted a sweater, it's made from one thread. So if you have a woven fabric, there's a thread going across and a thread going down, the warp, the weft and the warp. But with a knitted fabric, like when you're knitting, you've only got one strand of thread and that's how these are made as well. So it's just like, you know, knitting. Oh, is it, what's the stitch? I'm not a knitter, knitter o -polar -o, whatever that one is. Um, but very, very tiny needles and a very, very tiny thread. And jersey can be made from viscose, it can be made from cotton, it can be made from polyester. I like to, I like to deal in cottons, to be honest. So these are a couple of jerseys that I brought to show you. This is one that I'm going to be using. Very, very different looks. Kim's just made a pair of trousers out of these, actually. Uh, yesterday, I just I saw the picture come through. I think it's on a Facebook page. Um, no, she's the an ugly cat. Oh, I don't know. Ugly's cute. Now then, um, when you get the stretch fabric, some will be st more stretchy in one direction than another. So this is actually the selvage, feels a bit stiff, and you'll find more stretch going across this way, east to west, normally, than you would do north to south. Some fabrics will be stretchy only in one direction, or they call it two-directional fabric, so that'll be across this way with no stretch in that direction. This one again, same kind of thing. Lots of stretch in both directions. Now you can tell if you don't have the selvage or you don't have a print on your fabric, you can always tell which way around the fabric's going to be because when you pull it and stretch it, 
the print side or the right side will curl from the bottom upwards and the sides will curl inwards from there you go look if you stretch it that's the selvage so my fabric has gone from I'll just open this up that's folded in half but that's the direction of the fabric because the selvage is down the side but if you stretch it and pull it the selvage end will fold to the wrong side and the left to right side I was going to say the weft but it's not it's not woven will curl to the right side so although with a lot of um, a lot of jerseys that are plain you're not going to tell which is the right and wrong side if you are putting lots of different pattern pieces down it's always advisable to make sure that you put them all on the same side just in case there's a very slight difference you may not see it when you're looking at the right and wrong side of a plain piece of jersey fabric as you're looking at it but when you've made up your top or whatever it is that you're wearing and you step back and you look and there's a very slight difference you're going to be kicking yourself so just make sure that you put your pattern pieces on the right side every time now a lot of fabrics this one isn't too bad will curl like crazy as you're cutting them so as you're cutting jersey fabric if it's curling like this you're going to iron it so I've just put my iron on I've actually lost my mini iron I've lost it I think I've left it at create and craft um, so that's the curl some can curl an awful lot more than that and it can be a nightmare to try and get your pattern pieces right up to the edge when you've got all of this going on with your fabric so you spray starch or your best press and you're going to soak it this washes out so don't worry about your fabric ending up really really stiff so soak it, soak it, soak it. It has to be either starch or best press. It's not going to work with just water. And then press it until it's dry. My iron's not quite hot enough as yet. Thank you, Cheryl. Have a great day yourself as well. Oh, pockets on your beanbag would be a great idea, Alan. You come up with all these things. Why didn't I think of that one? So again, spray, 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 spray. And press, press, press until it's dry. Okay, like that. Thank you, Lisa. So this is going to start feeling really stiff, but again, whether you're using starch or you're using best press, this is what we have on the website. It smells lovely. That's going to wash out. So that's it. That's your prep. That's now stiff and you can cut it out really simply. If you have a large enough cutting mat and whoops, and you're quite confident with a rotary cutter. I find it easier to cut jersey fabric with a rotary cutter, so you can cut around your patterns. I'd use a 28mm um, a rotary cutter, so you can go around curves very easily, but then you're not lifting the fabric, it's staying flat as you're cutting. So that's, that's kind of cutting instructions. The curl, I think, is the, is the biggest problem that a lot of people are going to have. So let's get on to actually sewing it. Now there's... Um, I would recommend that you buy a jersey or a ballpoint needle. They have slightly rounded tips. So you imagine a, a piece of knitting and you've got an, a sharp knife going through it, as in your needle. If you cut one of the actual threads, it can ladder. And it's the same with jersey fabric. So a sharp needle could cut the thread and you could get a little ladder. It's not going to run the whole length of the, the fabric, but you could get a little ladder there. So when you use a jersey or a ballpoint needle, it parts the threads of the jersey instead of cutting through them. So that can make a big difference. It can also make a difference with skip stitches if you found your stitches skipping while you're using jersey fabric. Now I've got a piece of plain fabric so I can show you what the stitches look like because my jersey is all quite patterned here. And let me show you stitches that you can use. If you use a straight stitch, a straight, I'll show you that actually, a straight stitch doesn't stretch. So let me just take a piece of, oh which one am I using for the headband? I've got all these bits but I don't know which one I'm using. It was the longest one. Oh, hang on a second while I just I just do this. That's it. I'm using that one. So let's go here. So if I'm just using a straight stitch, so this is a regular stitch on my sewing machine, you'll start to sew your garment together. And you say, oh, that looks good, that looks fine. That's sewing very well, thank you very much. 
no problem there with a the straight stitch. The problem is a straight stitch doesn't stretch. So if you just listen to this, that's not what you want to hear. Because now I've got a whole row of broken stitches. And if this is a pair of leggings, you can see my pants. And we don't want that. So you're going to use a zigzag or a lightning stitch. So let's show you the zigzag stitch first of all. This one will automatically go to the zigzag stitch. And you can't quite see it there, can you? Oh, yes. So I'm on a width of 3 and a length of 1.5. I'm going to take the width down to maybe 1. And I'm going to increase the length to 2.5. And, and let's see how we go. So again, I'm just sewing this on plain fabric so you can see the stitch. So that stitch, although it looks quite straight, is actually zigzag enough to give the fab to give the stitch stretch. So let's take my test piece of fabric again and use this stitch. And then when I pull it that's not going to break like the other one did. What's the difference between single and double jersey? Rosina, do you know? I don't know. I would imagine double jersey would be two layers of fabric. Um, oh, no, it's double knit, isn't it? It's a different kind of weave, a uh, different kind of knit. I should, I'll try and get hold of some and show you at some point. Right. Let's have a look in here because you may have a stitch on your machine that looks like that. Has that gotten a little bit fuzzy and out of focus? Let's give it a second. Um, so it's a zigzag stitch, but it's at an angle. Um, and that's called a lightning stitch. So if I stitch this one out, so that is number five on my machine. Let's stitch it out and show you what this one looks like. And again, you can make the stitches longer if you wanted to. You can make them wider if you wanted to. And that's what it looks like. So this one is your regular zigzag. This one is the lightning. And then I lengthened it and increased the width on it as well. So that again is going to be a stitch that you uh, that will stretch. The other one that you may like to use is a triple straight stitch. So that looks like three rows of dots. Um, but it actually does like a back stitch, so two stitches forward and one stitch back. So that's number four on this machine. And let's show you what that one looks like. This one takes a lot of thread and it takes a lot of time. And it slows the machine down as well, as you can hear. Hi Grace, hi Nancy. Um, right. So again, just take quite a long time. But that is again a stretch stitch. But it's also a nice stitch to go around the bottom of jeans or if you're doing a top stitch and you really want it to stand out because you've actually got three lots of thread in each one of those stitches. So anyone on the back, three lots of thread on the front. And that again is a, a stretch stitch. Hello, Ms. Nancy. Um, Anyone had trouble with foreign men hassling you for friend requests and send you weird messages? Block them, Sarah. I don't get I don't get very many of those to be honest, but I just don't reply and block them and completely ignore it and forget about it. Right, I'm going to make up the headband while I've got this needle in, and then I'll show you a little bit of twin needle stitching. I do have a, a twin stretch needle. Stretch isn't perfect, to be honest. I would prefer ballpoint or jersey, but I could only find a stretch. Stretch needles are aimed more at um, fabrics with lycra in or elastane, things like um, swimming costumes and that kind of thing. I'll just unplug my eye in because it's a bit smelly. Hello, Jeannie from Missouri. Um, crafty Lass, hello. Thank you for explaining it. Olga, oh, uh, talking to Lisa. Late today, sorry, what's happening today? We're talking about stretch fabric, Jean. I'm going to make up a little headband. 
So I'm going to go back to the lightning stitch, which is number five. It's ever so easy. It's going to take five minutes to do this. This is it. This one is made with an 18 inch by 7 inch strip of fabric and that would be suitable for a child. I've gone for 20 inches by 8 inches for the one that I'm going to make you and it's got a twist in it. I'll explain to you how to make the twist. If you prefer it without a twist then of course you can do and you could even put a tie around there, make a little bow um, or just a piece of fabric rolled around if you wanted that kind of look. But we're going to have the one with the twist and it's it's basically the same as do you remember the um the infinity scarf that we made it's like a smaller version of that when do you use a twin needle deirdre you can use them as decorative stitches some of your sewing machines will have um dedicated stitches for twin needles or have a a button that you can press to gray out any of the stitches that aren't suitable for twin needles like buttonholes and some decorative stitches do be aware if you don't have that facility that a twin needle um, it, it's it's great at sewing straight you can do a zigzag stitch but test it first by turning the handwheel very slowly because it may swing the needle over too far and hit the foot in which case the needle's going to break so it doesn't always have enough room in that in the foot for the twin needle so try that out first of all but for decorative stitches perfect um, when you see twin needle sewing on jeans so you see two perfect rows of stitches on hems and side seams and things like that that's a twin needle or well, they'll be industrial but it's the same kind of thing but for jersey fabrics it's it's perfect perfect because your straight stitch will become stretch and I'll explain that when we go onto the twin needle when we made the headband if that's okay right so I have my what have I done with it 20 inch by 8 inch strip of fabric and that's that ever so easy this one I mean if you're making things to sell oh you could do so many of these really quickly we're going to fold this over right sides together. We're going to plug the iron back in again and drench this in best press first of all because it has gone a little bit curly. I wish I could find my mini iron. I'm sure I've left it at Create and Craft. So good old soaking. On dressmaking patterns sometimes, not, not all the time, I haven't got them on the back wing top of mine, um, you'll see a black bar on the lip on the inside of the cover and it'll show you where your fabric needs to stretch from so it'll have like a mold like that and then another one and you need to stretch from that to that one if you were wondering what that was all about so I'll just give this a quick press Jean says just what she needs after growing her hair I don't wear headbands unless I'm in the bath because sometimes I like a nice long soak and read a magazine in an evening. That's what I do. And I don't want to get my hair wet. So it's the only time I actually wear one. But the kids wear them. And again, you can make these any size. does need to be jersey fabric, not woven fabric, because it needs to stretch. That will do. And we're going to fold this right sides together. And sew down the edge with around about a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm going to leave a little turning gap of about two inches just in one side. So again, I've got my lightning stitch on there. So don't be worried if it takes a little longer to sew than a regular straight stitch because it is going backwards and forwards a little bit. So that's where my turning gap's going to be. Yes, I did. Elsie, it is 20 inches by 8 inches for an adult. The other one that I made was 18 inches by uh, 7 inches, and I thought that would be fine for a child. All right, so just keep lining those edges up. So could have drenched that in best press a little bit more. There we go. Oh, Angela, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, Jersey is a fantastic fabric to work with. Um, you don't have to double hem it, it doesn't fray. So there's no need to finish the seams on the inside. You don't need to, uh, to um, overlock or 
use pinking shears or a zigzag stitch actually if you have an overlock if you're going to be sewing a lot with jersey it's worth investing in one because overlock stitches are automatically stretch and they're a lot quicker than a sewing machine so an overlocker isn't going to slow down when it's got stretch fabric like this one is it's still going to be sewn at around about 13,000 stitches a minute um, but with a sewing machine it will slow it down a little bit so we've got this and then we're going to turn it through all the way and then we're going to turn it back again sure I didn't do that last time I want this to be right sides together all right so that's what we're looking like that's my turning gap so I've got my hole in there and then we're going to fold this back but I want to make sure I know where the seam is okay so just keep rolling that down if you don't want the twist in the headband line up these two edges so that the seams are matching and sew all the way around the top if you want the twist we're going to do that now and we're just going to turn the inside so that that seam is on the opposite side to that seam and again line up the edges and then we're just going to sew all the way around here don't worry if that's not perfect it's a headband not a wedding dress so let's line up these edges here and so Try not to stretch the fabric as you're sewing. That actually is another look. If you're, um, if you're leaving a raw edge as a hem and you stretch it, and particularly with an overlocker, just sew straight across the edge, you get a really lovely fluted edge. So it kind of goes all frilly. Can you see what I'm doing there? I'm just getting on with this without even thinking about what you're doing. So again, just sew around the inside this is going to be too narrow to use the free arm on your sewing machine and I'm using the edge of my foot as a seam allowance so it's just over a quarter of an inch it's not doesn't really matter so that's that and then we'll turn this the right side out I'm not going to sew the opening closed on this one actually because um, I think you get the idea. Hello, Tarina, watching us live for once. So you've got a turning gap here, and I would fold the edges of the gap into the centre and just do a very small over edge stitch to close it, and that is it. So there's your band. Let's open that up a little bit with the twist just in one side there. And again, if you don't want the twist, you could tie a ribbon around there uh, or maybe a piece of the of the jersey. You could make a piece of jersey with a point at each end and then tie that around so it looks like a bow or you could just leave it like that. So that's that. Let's do this twin needle business. So a twin needle goes into your sewing machine in exactly the same place as your... Oh, no, that one as your regular needle so let's take this one out and where did I put it and put this one in this is a four millimeter twin uh, twin needle some needles I think they go up to six millimeters and that's the distance between the two needles um, four millimeters is quite a nice distance because it really does show the the, the two rows of stitches um, but a lot of sewing machines when you have a twin needle that arrives with it they're going to be closer than that it could be two millimeter distance so just have a think about what, what kind of look you want oh you've got one shank with a flat back to it domestic sewing machines the needle will go in with a flat back to the back and just push that shank into the same hole that the previous needle came out of and then tighten that up Oh, David says, you've inspired me to get on with some jersey sew, maybe a t-shirt rather than a headband. I have an overlocker. Perfect, David, if you have an overlocker. Let me take another piece of thread. I'm going to use a different colour. 
Right, um, a lot of sewing machines will have a separate spool. This one does, is there's a hole there to put a stick in. I've just lost the spool. But I'm not worried about that. I'm going to take a little box that I've made and drop the thread in there so it doesn't bounce around all over the place. I'm going to put that back there. And then to thread the machine, I've already got one thread going through here. Let me show you here. You won't be able to use your needle threader and you won't be able to use the um, the thread snipper on your machine when you're using a twin needle. So let's. this may take a while because I'm not good at threading by eye. Now some machines will have two guides to thread this one does actually so you can put your needle at uh, your thread here through either side of that um, that bar if it doesn't don't worry about it they both go in the same way so let's let's thread this up let's thread this up I'm just gonna put my finger around behind there so I can see the hole there we go so that's the left hand needle threaded and that goes through the foot like so and then with the right hand side I'm going to go through exactly the same channels so all the same but this time I'm going on the right hand side so, so some machines will have that facility some don't and then this is going to go through the right hand needle that that one's just wrapped itself around Okay, and any sewing machine should do this. So some are have uh, you know all the, the the buttons and the facilities and everything for you to press when you're using a twin needle. Some don't. Oh. This is really interesting, isn't it? Watching somebody who doesn't have good eyesight try to thread a needle by hand. If you have an overlocker. Talk amongst yourselves for just a second while I try and do this. Let me put something white behind it. Um, if you have an overlocker, they have, or a lot of them will have a needle threader for each needle. So you don't have this problem. Go on in. Now's a good time to just go and put the kettle on. Make yourself a cuppa. Give me half an hour. And I may just get it done. Oh, go on in, for goodness sake. Do, do feel free to chat to other people that are here, you know, while I'm just really making an issue out of threading a needle. Um, a hand bow needle threader. I think I need one. I'm going to put a bit of best press on the end of it. Hairspray apparently can work really well as well. Taking 30 years of living with cats to have to... Oh, okay. Um... Are you wetting the thread? It expands when wet. I've I've heard that, Rosina, but it does tend to flatten the end of it if you get in there straight away. Yes, 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 yes. Don't come out, don't come out. I've done it. Yes, it's in. No, it's out. It was in, then it was out. Times like this, you realise that you should have really started on a twin needle demo so that it's in there and ready and prepped before you start. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. That was a bit tedious, wasn't it? That's why I like a, um, a sewing machine with a needle threader. Okay, so don't come out. Don't you come out. Let me show you what the stitch looks like again on the plain fabric first. I think it was a good time to put the kettle on. I think it was a good time to put the kettle on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have you made me coffee in the time it's taken to do that? Yes. <laughs> and walk down here. Thank a bit. you. <laughs> um, you're a bit yellow on top. I'm, I, I'm yellow on top. Yeah, do I need uh, my roots doing? How dare you? Um, I don't know if any of you mentioned, but you're. No. Nope. Yeah, Am I yellow on top? We're fine on top. It's a bit warm on top. That no, we're all right. Lighting technicians. 
striving for perfection. Right, so straight stitch, and I'll show you what this looks like. So I'm going to lengthen the stitch. Actually, I've gone up to three and a half just so that you can see it. Don't you break. Oh, attempting to use the, the thread snipper if you use that a lot. Okay, I've gone, I've gone and put pink in, haven't I? So I've got pink on pink, but you can see it. Um, so that's from the top. So I've got my one row of pink stitches and my one row of, of white stitches. From the back, the bottom thread will zigzag. Can you see that? It's, let me get that close up. Um, will zigzag between the two stitches, which is what makes it stretch. So you don't have to worry about, you know, choosing the zigzag stitch or the lightning stitch when you're using this stitch because the bottom thread will automatically zigzag so you've automatically got stretch there and that gives you a really nice finish it's almost like um, a cover stitch kind of look with the two rows of stitches like that so if you're hemming um, whoops, your jersey the two rows of stitches are coming from the top not from underneath so you'll need to hem from the top. So what I like to do is you only need to turn it up once. Again, there's no need to double hem with jersey because it's not going to fray. I'd put my pins away from the there we go, away from the actual edge because I'm not going to take those out when I sew. But we need to sew from this side. So you can feel where the hem is. And if you don't feel it, um, oh, I did this last time, didn't I? I don't have an erasable marker pen. If you have chalk, it's perfect. Or if you have an erasable marker pen. I've got so many pens down here. Look at all this lot. And not one of them is the one that I'm looking for. That happens so often, doesn't it? Let's see what's down here. I've got so many glues, I've got so many scissors, I've got threads, I've got everything but an erasable marker pen. So what you would do, where the edge of that is, is to draw a line so you can feel where it is and just draw where you're going to sew. So I can't do that, can I? So I'm going to try and feel it. And so with the ridge straight down the centre, I think I've got it, straight down the centre of the, the um, presser foot. I think I've caught it. So, best case scenario, let's just take this out. <coughs> Come here. Two rows of stitching from the top, that tension needs loosening on that one, that's a little bit tight. And then, oh, just missed a bit. One row from the back, but stitching over the edge. If you can't do that exactly, then just stitch on the inside. It doesn't matter. I've just loosened the tension on that a little bit. It was pulling it like um, when you're doing a pin to it. We've done that before, haven't we? So let's see if that's a little bit flatter. That's better. So tension was a little bit too tight there and you can actually see it's caused a ridge. Um, that's another thing, Deirdre, you can, um, you can pin tuck with it. So do take the, the tension up if you're going to make pin tucks, but we want it to lay flat on this one. So I just loose, uh, loosen the tension a little bit and that now lays flat. So there you've got your zigzag along the back and then you can trim this back if you wanted to, right up to the edge of the stitches. So if you haven't caught the back there, or you, you don't want to be so precise, or you can't be so precise, then sew a little way in and then trim this back. But you don't have to if you don't want to, because that's just not going to fray. Um, request for an overlocker tutorial on a Wednesday. We can do that. I do have an... Oh, no, no, I've got a brother one here. The one that I have at the office that Kim uses is an air threader which are twice the price of regular overlockers, but worth it because they're so easy to thread. 
I can't show you that one because it's down at the office and Kim uses it every day because um, she does an awful lot of dressmaking. But I do have another overlocker here, I think. So yes, we could do that. We'll just do something simple. Should we do that next week? So we can thread it and show you how to overlock around corners, um, right angle corners and then outy corners and inny corners. Let's have a look at that next week. You know I'm going to forget that because I can't write it down. But if that's okay with you. Uh, Rita uses a stretch twin needle, a special foot for pin tucks. Deirdre, you can do. And I did have one, didn't I? But it didn't fit this machine. We did pin tuck in the other week. It's got little grooves underneath it and they come in different sizes. So yes, you can use that for pin tucking, but you don't need it. Um, you can just use your regular twin needle. The, the pin tucking foot helps you to sew in a straight line by guiding the pin tuck that you make first of all underneath the foot. So the second stitch is the right distance apart. But you can use the edge of your foot to gauge that or you could draw it. Um, maybe your pin tucks aren't going to be very close together, so you could actually draw those on if you wanted to. What's quite nice as well, have, a, have an experiment with your pin tucking, because that's the kind of thing that you're used to seeing on the front of, of men's dress shirts. Try it in a wavy line. I did some, it might have been a sample for my, oh, um, Sewing Room Secrets machine sewing book. I think there's a bit on twin needle sewing in there and I just I just did a like a, a crosshatch quilting but with a twin needle and making wavy lines in both directions in two different colours of threads and that looks really nice as well. So it, it can it can be quite playful and it can be quite a decorative thing to do as well. Hello Kimberly Hind, what you been doing today? Won't you forget because I could do this thing. <laughs> You've got the easiest overlocker to thread ever. They, they, they can't, although we'll talk about this next week, shall we? We'll do it next Wednesday. Make a date. Um, Bobbin is, Bobbin's really good, Liana. She's inside at the moment because my son's there with his girlfriend and she adores them, so she's, uh, she's drooling over them. <laughs> um, I could do the refresher course in uh, dressmaking from my daughter, I tell you. So uh, Myra sews up scraps to make beds for the cat and dog sanctuary. That's a nice idea. Um, the pot... No, the po which pot? That's this one, the one I keep my clips in. This one is a. It's on YouTube. This was one of the Half Yard Club sew-alongs. This one is on YouTube. Um, this one isn't, if that's the one that you meant. And I'm going to make this one's a bit messy. This one is on YouTube as well. I've got loads of these, they're obviously useful. So YouTube, 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 that, that's dead easy, but that, that was um, that was a pattern that I made for that birds panel. Oh, that's a nicer one to show you, rather than one that's really scruffy and full up. Bear with me a second, that one. That was on YouTube as well. So have a look at my YouTube channel and look at um, storage boxes and you'll find loads of different little things like this there's a lot more than that on there as well actually i just haven't got them all around but they're really useful and i i use all of them as you can see particularly that one like that my favorite one liana is it your birthday coming up marie's got a bird fabric today oh jacqueline i don't know what that says but i, I think i'm saying thank you <laughs> The one with the clips in it, yeah, that's defi that definitely on YouTube. Um, I think that's overlockers, isn't it, you're talking about? Is the post being sent out in the past week? as ordered last Thursday, but not received, which is very unusual. No, our post is going out quite regularly at the moment, Sandra. Um, could you email me on the enquiries at com, and I'll have a look into that if you just let me know if you've got the order number, what that was, but otherwise we'll, we'll have a look. I'll have a look when I come off air here. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Oh, birthday Friday, Lena. Happy birthday to you for Friday. You have a lovely day. Okie doke. Well, I'm going, to, I'm going to pop off. I've lost my mouse. I can't switch you off until I've 
that's it. And I'm just going to do that. So I shall see you on Saturday. Um, don't know what we're making. I try and get ahead with all of these demos and organisation, and I'm pretty rubbish at it. It tends to be everything last minute. Um, can I just press one down. Oh dear, I hope, you, I hope you like it. Kitten will have a new stretch threat called Maraflex, do they? Yes, we are live on Saturday at 11 o'clock. Then I shall be on Create and Craft from 4 till 8 o'clock, Paper Craft. And Sunday morning, I can't remember what time, I've got four sewing shows on Create and Craft on Sunday morning. And then we're back to normal next Wednesday at <laughs> Be There or Be Square. Um, oh, thank you, Free Spirit. That's very nice of you to say. No problem, David. Thank you. And Linda and Jean. And um, oh, you've got so many birthday wishes, Liana. Um, Jacqueline. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what you're saying. I don't understand that language. <laughs> Lisa says she's tuning in for the Great Craft Paper Craft because she needs a laugh. It's going to be dreadful. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm really not looking forward to that. You know, when you think, oh, that, that's a, oh, that'd be quite fun. Oh, I'll do that. That's a nice idea. And then when it gets nearer the time, you think, why did I say that? But anyway, that's what I'm doing. Um, Myra, I'll put some thought into that. Thank you. All right, okay, so I'm going to go. I shall see you again Saturday at 11 o'clock where we'll make something else. And uh, if you can't make that, I shall see you again back here with Overlockers next Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Thanks for your company. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye.